Hey, it's Andy from Aquarius Maintained by Andy. Everybody keeps calling and asking what all we have going on up here, so I, nobody's calling, nobody's asking that. But I thought I'd do a little walk around today and show you all what uh, we have going on up here and all that kind of stuff. And I haven't made a video in a while, and so hopefully y'all enjoy it. Where that duck weed on me? So these are the Jack Watley discus I've had for a while, trying to get a breeding operation going, but it has been a soap opera. Uh, they keep changing partners and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'm just keeping them. They're very pretty. Uh, a lot of maintenance to keep up with them. But they are all healthy, and we'll see what comes about these guys in the future. These guys are a, uh, a breeding pair of koi angels. I got them in, and I set up this 55 for them, and we'll see what they do. Hopefully we'll get some babies out of them. Like I even need a breeding pair of koi angels. Alright, we're just going to kind of go through our rack system here. These are green fire tetras. Pretty cool. They stay probably about an inch and a half, two inches. Of course, we got a bunch of female guppies. Got a, two males in there, you know, just for baby guppy's sake. We got a few algae eaters. A couple bristle nose. We also have a fair willow catfish in here, our twig cat. I'm a huge fan of these guys, I like them a lot. Got our mill guppies here. A couple of the peacock cichlids, the male and female. The female is up top there. She has not succumbed to the male, so he's keeping her up there water on that one. We've got some blood fin tetras. Some cherry barbs and some glow light tetras. We also have some green red uh, corridors but they are not coming out. There is a telescope eye fantail panda goldfish. Real pretty. And there's a, a female bristle nose I believe it is behind her. In this tank, we got some blue grommies, some dwarf flame grommies, and uh, there's a few shells down here, but this tank actually produces assassin snails really well. Like, there's one right there on the glass, but they are all in the substrate, and there are all of, uh, they have, there's all kinds of sizes of them in here. In this tank, we got your some Harlequin Rasboras. We have different types of corridors in here also. There's an albino and I think there's a yeah, there's an emerald over here. We got an auto catfish. I've been trying to get Siamese algae eaters in, but nobody really has those right now. And of course there's some pearl grommies. Some of my favorite fish right there. And in this tank, I have been breeding white clouds. I don't know if you can see them or not, but uh, there's a one that's grown up. And of course, got some rabbit snails, which I can't sell rabbit snails in Mississippi. Um, they actually came in on a mixed bag. Uh, they are, are invasive, I believe, in Mississippi. And then I got this tank right here. It's got a few potted plants in it. Long fin leopard danios. A couple of neons mixed in. I had a bunch more neons, but somebody came in and, and got those guys. I had some Borneo sucker fish, but I have not seen those since I put them in, so I don't know if they've made it. And of course, a couple of your panda quarries. On the saltwater side, as you can see, I have all of these green star polyps that are, I'm highly motivated to sell if somebody wants to come get those. I got a uh, clove polyp colony, a mushroom colony, pallies here. Got a Kenya tree forest. I got 
single mushroom zoanthids. Some more zoanthids, yellow clove polyps, and green star polyps over here. And now all of these, uh, I would say 90% of the corals here have all been farmed either from a, a tank that I have or either this tank exactly. Like for example, all of these uh, pulsating xenia, they are being farmed here. And all these mushrooms. And in my SBS tank, we have got several different types of corals going on in here. Got a, a rock anemone. And there's another one in here. This one has moved, moved around a whole lot. Then of course I have a ton of red and orange monopora. There's also some green monies in here. Some brain corals mixed in, some green monopora, spongiotis, and pavona cactus. Here's a spongiotis. Large green echinata. Different types of sophastria. And then uh, got an elegance coral right there. Oh, and a blood trimp. Check him out. That that guy has molted like four times in the past month. Uh, in the corner, you can see the rock and enemy. And this tank is just a, a very low maintenance tank. It has a few neon tetras in it, a few small plants. It has a waterfall. Some purple passion, some pothos or pythos. And that's made by pin plaques. And that light that comes with it is actually a pretty good plant growing light. And then we got our arrow crab. I like these guys. Got a few feather dusters on the rock. Also have some more xenia. And more green star polyps. Excuse the glass, excuse the glass. This is actually my damsel tank, so anytime a customer wants damsels, uh, when I order them, I put them in here. And let them chill out for a while and quarantine them before I take them to the tank. And this is my other clownfish tank. I got a, a fairy basslet back over here in the corner. There's a purple pseudochromus in here as well. And just some more like just coral frags or just random. But I also have some really large turbo snails. This guy's pretty big. And here's my other little coral grow out tank. Some of these uh, corals we refer to as like if they get on the struggle bus, I put them in a smaller tank so I can quarantine them and medicate them like this uh, Pasama coral right there. It actually had a, a, a good bit of die off going. But I put it in here medicated with some Canaplex and it seems to be doing a whole lot better. This rock's got some small feather dusters on it, some worms, some cleaner shrimp. Now, this little tank is actually one of my favorite. It is very, very, very low maintenance. And these cherry shrimp reproduce very easily. I just feed them uh, shrimp dust and sometimes I give them the shrimp king food and I also give them bacteria AE which is a powder that helps the biofilm grow over everything I believe I believe that's what it does got to be careful with it though because if you put too much in there you can uh, cause an algae bloom that will suck all of the oxygen out of the water and make the tent dead and this is uh, my salt water holding tank for tangs and whatnot. Which, uh, by the way, I bought this Nicru light. Nicru, I think it was like 200 bucks for that light for a 55 gallon tank. And as you can see the, I think it's called a watermelon long pour, I can't remember the name. And this camera doesn't really do it justice, but to the right, it's really a dark green. And then on the edges, it's, it's kind of a pink color. So there's actually, there's two different color schemes going on there. But anyway, it's growing that, the Sophastria, 
on several rocks are spreading. The mushrooms have reproduced very well in this tank. There's a mushroom I have right there going on to a frag plug. Um, it really sustains life really well uh, for, for an inexpensive light. It's definitely a, not a bad way to go. There's an Aptasia eating file fish. So, I guess that's really about it. Not a whole lot going on up here. But thank you for checking in on the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've stayed all the way to the end. I, I would appreciate that. And remember, healthy fish live in a healthy tank. You have a great day.